Hey, this is Big Guy DIY coming to you with a trailer review. So, let me put my camera down here. I don't like that angle. <laughs> so, what I did is I've been towing. I think this will stay. I've been towing my snowmobiles now for 20 years on an open trailer. Uh, the last trailer I purchased is a trailer I did a review on. It's the um, Big Tex trailer. It's an 18-foot utility trailer. And some of my drives can range from, say, an hour to two hours to as long as five hours to get to my destination. I'll drop my sleds off, go for a ride. Could be three, four, or five hours of ride, and then turn around, and drive right back. So yeah, it makes it for a long day. But you're going with two people, so you can kind of split the driving when you're going up there. Um, the problem I have is I like I try to keep my sleds pretty clean, and when I trailer, I do cover them. And the thing that frustrates me is the amount of road salt that gets on the sleds. Especially here in uh, northern New England, they use salt brine, which is very, very corrosive. Um, as a matter of fact, as I speak right now, I went to change the oil on my 2003 Yukon and found the frame cracked wide open. Just totally rusted out. It's just that's what this salt brine pretreatment does to a vehicle. It absolutely eats metal. So, when I trailer my sleds, I'm tired of them getting covered with slush and salt brine and any other road debris that's out there. Uh, I think the straw that broke the camel's back was this season I took my wife and my daughter up to the White Mountains in New Hampshire to go for a ride. Because um, I'm trying to get my daughter to get more sled time so she's more confident when she drives. And... It was snowing like crazy when we got there. Just just up in the mountains, it was just snowing. And three of us trying to change into our gear in the pickup truck. And then taking all these wet covers off the sled and getting the sleds off the trailer. And my sleds were held on with straps. I was not using a, what do you call it there? It, the one bar that goes across the skis to hold the sleds down. I was not using that. I was using straps so I can fit uh, as many as four sleds on my trailer. And if you had those bars to hold the skis, it wouldn't work because I had to shimmy them around in order to get them to fit. Anyways, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back was the trip to New Hampshire this past winter. I got tired of changing inside the truck, having no room. And all the crap that's on the trailer. So when I shop for things, I I not only shop for the price, but I also shop for the quality, the warranty, and the kind of options I can get. So in a sense, the most bang for your buck. I was lucky this season when I was riding up in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. There were three trailers, and the chances of that happening was rare but three enclosed hybrid trailers mission snow pro and pro line all parked next to each other uh one was from quebec one was vermont and the other one was new hampshire <clears throat> so it gave me a first-hand opportunity to walk around these sleds and look at their build quality because those are the trailers that are usually available for sale around uh, my area and so it gave me a, an opportunity to really look at them and how they're assembled from the exterior standpoint. Uh, the owner that owned the Pro Line came back later that day when we were hanging out near the parking lot, and I got a chance to talk with him and look inside his trailer. And so I started going online and looking at trailers. So I was comparing the uh, 7 foot 16. Mission Hybrid, single axle, the 7x16 Snow Pro seven, um, Hybrid, and the Pro Line 
7x16 hybrid single axle all of them single axle online they gave me the prices on them I think they're around they're between uh, 82 82 and 85 at the time pro line the way their prices are and their prices are online so if you want to see what they are you can look it up and as you add the accessories you just add the price of the accessory to the price of the trailer so after going back and forth and getting information about all three trailers I ended up sending an email to ProLine inquiring about the warranty on it so the warranty is what sold me on this trailer which I will mention at the end of this video so no further ado this is what I ended up getting this is a ProLine 7x16 all aluminum trailer now there are some options on here that I added and I will point them out as I go along what I'm going to try to do is side by side pictures of the mission the snow pro to my video so I'll, I'll insert the pictures in so this is one view you will see with the pictures first one will be a mission And now the Snow Pro. So you'll notice, I don't have the big opening in the front. I did not want that because with all the stuff that gets kicked up here, the last thing I need is anything seeping through the seams of a forward hatchway. I don't know why you would put a forward hatchway when you have a door. You can just walk in, secure your sled. You're not gonna secure your sled from the hatchway, it's too high. Uh, so I don't understand why they did the hatchway maybe some people like it or something <clears throat> but that was one thing it kind of turned me off the other option I was not able to get on the other trailers that weren't offered they were doing a four pin flat I did a seven pin round all sealed cable and you'll see why when I get to the back of it the framing is all closed aluminum squares. Go underneath here. There's no C channels at all. It's all square aluminum and all welded. give you an idea so any parts where this aluminum came out it's capped off and then they do have a seep hole here just in case something does get in water can seep out but other than that it's all fully enclosed galvanized axle uh, axle, axle uh, galvanized tire rims it's a stock tire rim and obviously trailer tires the axle has a 10 year warranty. The tires have a six year warranty. And the first year is uh, for puncture. So if your tire gets punctured the first year, it gets replaced. So 
How light is this trailer? I'm picking it up with my hand. And this is a 16 foot trailer. Doors. I chose, I didn't bring my key out. Let me go get my key. There are two types of doors. So I optioned for a different door. Uh, this door is what they call a camper's door. So it comes with the window, deadbolt, regular lock. But what I have here is a screen door. And the reason I did that is it allows me to make this this trail a little more versatile um because i'm hoping to someday some year in my retirement is to buy a piece of land up in maine and i can use this to camp in and i'll show you another option i put on here to make this a little more better for camping but the sledge will be stored in here most of the time 110 Plug your extension cord here, and that will give you 120 right inside. So again, I could use this, like I said, for camping, but also if I want to plug in chargers and run the chargers to my snowmobiles, I can do that now. I can run, I can run two chargers to my sleds. So that's option number one I put on the trailer. One of the uh, uh, choices they give you when you're looking at this trailer is vents, either up here in the corners, this corner, and then the uh, other front corner, or a vent on the top. I chose the top vent. It's closed, open and closed by this handle. And I chose this vent because when this gets filled up with smoke, it needs to exit, smoke rises. So I did that. I didn't do the other vents that really are useless. Now you can see the front of the trailer, fully framed, box frame, welded. Zoom in here. Everything is welded. There are no rivets used in this. My other option was a spare tire. I wanted it on the inside of the camper. So they installed the spare tire holder, as you can see. Lighting. On the Mission Trailer and the Snow Pro, they have that big opening right here. They got a single light that is mounted right here. That's it. There's no options to add lights unless the dealership does it. My trailer comes with three lights. All LEDs and they are bright they definitely light up the entire area here so when you have a sled in you don't have to worry about the light being blocked to the back as you work back here to secure the sled that was key right there again all enclosed square tubing for the roof This is stock, this is stock. If you notice the sides, there are no rivets to the sides. What they use on here, actually all the companies are, is a double-sided tape. It's a, a commercial grade tape. And so it will stick on there. If there's ever a problem, which there won't be, you can just call Proline Trailer. This is our back. And then the other option when I was showing you the inside vent. That's an RV cover on top of that vent. What it allows me to do is I can keep that vent open regardless of the weather outside. Let me uh, get into a higher point and give you a better picture. 
So here's the vent. And this covers the vent that you saw inside. What this allows me to do, this is an RV cover, they call it. It allows me to keep that vent open all the time, regardless if it's raining or snowing. Uh, it can still stay open. So for me, that was kind of important. The other thing I want you to take notice is the roof here is one solid sheet of metal, of aluminum. There are no seams on it. So like these here, you'd have the seams because they're different pieces going in using the double side tape. This is one sheet of metal. So let's go back down to the ground. So we're back down here. Both Mission Snow Pro and Pro Line have the same rear in a sense. Some, uh, I think it was a Snow Pro, had this little piece that would come out, you know, like an extension, and it had three loading lights on it. I thought about it, but it does nothing to benefit the trailer. It's strictly for looks. You know, it's it like for the cost of that option for something that doesn't do anything for the trailer, I decided against it and just stick with the traditional top. What I did add or had added is this is a load light that runs through the four pin plug that I had installed. I also have reverse lights added in and your brake lights. This also runs through the four pin or seven pin connector. So when my truck is put into reverse, these actually turn on. It's my truck is factory wired for reverse lights. This light here runs through a switch inside by the doorway, which I'll show you once we uh, open up things. The difference between the two or between all of them is this part here. I wanted the flap on this. Um, Snow Pro was offering it, but right now the pictures I have, they show they have like um, a curved end to the trailer. I didn't want that. I wanted this because then I can put the ski guide on here and reduce the chance of this edge, this leading edge getting damaged. Now here's another thing. If you look at this piano hinge, it's flush. The Mission or the Snow Pro trailer, I didn't get a picture of it. They have a piano hinge, but it sticks up. And what happens with that is when you're loading your sleds on, your ski skeg is going to cut into that piano hinge and eventually break it, damage it, or even go as far as pulling it out. Because Proline gets this specially built for them, that's not going to happen. As in lightweight, here's your one spring. Right here. One cable comes down. And I'm just using my foot to lift this up. Very light. So light that if I push on the back of the trailer, the whole front goes up. So here's the inside. The wood that they use, I forgot who it's by, but it's a lifetime warranty on this wood. You do not stain it, you do not varnish it, and you sure as hell don't paint it. Because uh, oil-based paint will actually ruin the wood. This wood is built to be out in the elements only. So water is not going to make it separate. This is not OSB. Even though it may look like it, it is not. Um, that's why underneath the trailer, all this wood can be seen. It's completely open. You can leave it like that. Because I inquired about getting 
uh, an undercarriage treatment. And he said, absolutely not. Don't do it because of the wood, the way it's designed. It's supposed to be left out in the elements and it'll never rot. Hinges, aluminum hinges, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. The nice thing about that is you don't have the dissimilarities of metals. So you're not going to get the corrosion because usually if you have steel, galvanized steel, that'll, that'll corrode the aluminum. So that was another thing that caught my eye is what they're using for hinges. That's very important. Track system, that's standard with the trailer. Uh, I purchased four D-rings, but I'm doing the, um, for the skis, I'm doing the, the, the single lever, what was it, clamp, super clamp, I think they call it. Uh, size, when they say seven feet by 16 feet, that's an outside measurement. So the outside edge to the outside edge. The inside edge, you're losing, um, it's six feet, eight inches, I think it is, from this inside corner to the inside corner. So you're losing a little width uh, from the inside wood to the inside of wood here. It's like six nine, six ten. So you're losing a little width when they say seven by 16. It's not truly seven by 16. Switches for the lights are right by the door. So one switch is for the internal uh, interior lights. The other switch is for the load light. That is plugged directly into your or attached wired. I'll try this again. It is wired directly to your vehicle. So when your vehicle's um, running lights are on, that's when you get power to this switch. That's the only time you get power to the switch. Here's a side view of the trailer. And I think that's it for all the options that I did on it. Um, trailing wise on the highway, this was a piece of cake. Um, Tra trails very very easy very straight you can see the this is carried all the way to the top to protect it because it's two pieces this is how it's sealed for its seam this is how all their seams are sealed LED lights throughout so you got them on the corners you got them on the outside of the fenders so to recap the difference between the two is pro line as I mentioned the lights pro line puts all their prices online so you can compare them uh, the mission and the snow pro were 80, I think it was 82, 83 to $8,500. I think the one I have is uh, a mission, picture of a mission, and I think the price was $8,500. It, it'll show when I put the picture up. With the options I added, so my options were backup lights, load light, um, the RV vent cover, the screen door, and a seven pin plug that put me at 8500 8575 I think it was to be exact uh, for the options oh and the other option which I didn't mention is I went with a taller trailer the height of this uh, from the floor to the ceiling is 62 I'm 63 the other one I think is 5'8". The Mission and the Snow Pro, I think, I don't know offhand what the heights were on those. I'll put it in the description someplace. But they were the same, 
they were, I think, smaller. One of them was definitely smaller than this one in regards to height. And so the price-wise, I got a better price overall because I was also able to option this. This is where the difference of why I bought the Pro-Line versus the Mission and the Snow Pro. Mission and Snow Pro are mass-produced trailers sold to a, a network of dealers that turn around and flip them. If there's an issue with that trailer within its warranty period, usually which is three years for manufacturing warranty, the trailer dealer has to deal with it. They're not the trailer manufacturer, they're just the dealer. And they have to deal with the warranties. If the trailer should ever get damaged, say because of an automobile accident, the trailer of manufacturer for Mission and Snow Pro do not repair trailers. Proline repairs their own trailers. They will not repair any other manufacturer's trailers. So should someone rear-end me, T-bone me, or I damage the front for whatever, they will fix their own trailers. And the warranty is three-year, but anything beyond that, I can go right to Proline, which is made in New Hampshire, Milton, New Hampshire, and they will take care of it. That's what sold me on this trailer because I'm buying it local and the warranty and it's the only trailer manufacturer that will work on their own trailers. And for me, that's, that's key. Hopefully I never damage it, but I know I can just go to New Hampshire now and get this thing repaired. So that's my review on the Proline 7x16. The reason I didn't do a dual axle is road friction. With a single axle, it's much easier to pull and you will get better fuel economy with that. So if you've got a smaller vehicle, I'm towing it with an F-150, but if you're towing it with a smaller SUV or smaller pickup, that makes a difference, single axle versus double. I don't know why you would go double if you're just hauling sleds because the weight capacity or the, the load capacity of this is more than enough to haul two sleds. You could fit three short tracks in here. It'd be really, really tight, but it can be done. Um, but again, you still won't exceed the um, load capacity of this trailer. So I don't know why you would do two axles and increase your road friction, make it more difficult. So that's my review of this trailer. If you got any questions, definitely rifle them down in the comments. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Uh, the fit and finish is excellent on this. The welds, I've gone through and looked at all the welds and they're, they're dead on perfect. I'm really, really impressed with this trailer. Uh, so hopefully this gives other sledders out there a little information on you know, what line they would like to choose. Proline does not mass produce their trailers. They're per order only. Once in a while they might have some uh, one or two trailers in their inventory for sale. But other than that, you order it. You can order it online. You can do a deposit online. And then you can go through the list of what you want for accessories. You can even visit the factory as well. And uh, check out the trailer if they have one in stock. Or if they're building one. I had a tour of the factory. And I got an opportunity to see this trailer firsthand. And they had, yeah, it was a six foot head height trailer they had on hand. They didn't have the shorter one. And so I'm still slouching to be in this. So this is Big Guy DIY signing off. Give me a thumbs up if this information helped you make a choice on what you'd like to go for a trailer. Uh, yeah, and don't forget to uh, subscribe. It helps the channel out a little. So, I am not promoted by Proline. I bought this trailer with my own money, and I inquired with Proline if it was all right if I did a review on it. Their reply was, it's your trailer. Do whatever you want. <laughs> That's New Hampshire for you. So, yes, this is my trailer, my money, my decision, and I'm kind of choosy when I come to, do, to this stuff. I have a little OCD going on. 
Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, let me turn around. Because of the balance of this rear door, whatever you choose to put, put on here, you want to make it as light as possible because if you add too much, especially uh, track mats, the rubber mats, if you put those on there, they'll be too heavy versus if you buy the like the plastic ladders. Uh, caliper, caliber, caliper uh, makes those plastic ladders. Um, I would go that route and then do the uh, non-slip ski guides on here. That'll help keep the weight down so this door will still be very, very easy to lift. My wife can lift it and that's important. Inside though, I will be doing the track mats down the center and uh, flat ski guides so they don't have a little prong sticking up like calipers do, C caliber or caliper, I can't forget, I keep forgetting the name. Because if I'm gonna camp in this, I don't want those little prong things sticking in my feet. So it'll just be a completely flat ski guy down here, rubber mats for the uh, track, because all my, all my tr uh, tracks on my sleds have picks. So that's it, all right, have a good one.